space-time is a mathematical concept we use to understand the universe and how it works. Existence as we know and perceive it has four dimensions, three spatial dimensions, length, height and width, and one temporal dimension, time. We think about space and time together like this because physics shows that the two are intrinsically connected when it comes to studying a given object at a given moment. In other words, an object has both coordinates in space and coordinates in time. Time is weird though, to put it lightly. We know it's there and always happening, but we can't see it and we can't travel forwards or backwards through it like we can through space. The concept of time dilation, which science experiments have proven, shows us just how strange the passage of time is. Essentially, time can move at different speeds from two different observation points. If you were on a spaceship traveling close to the speed of light, aiming to get 10 light years away from Earth, as measured on Earth, to you on the ship it would only feel like a few months. But to the people on Earth, it would still take you 10 years if you turned around and came straight back. 20 years on Earth would have elapsed, but for you only a fraction of that time will have passed. Weird as this is, though, it doesn't constitute breaking the space-time continuum, even though you would have technically traveled multiple years forwards in time, it's just how time works. With that in mind, what does constitute breaking the space-time continuum? It's quite hard to break it when it doesn't really work in the way that science fiction teaches us. It's not really a fabric that can be ripped or torn, though it does get stretched and warped by objects of different masses. The more mass an object has, the more it bends space-time, which is what creates gravity. So space-time is really just a way to understand how particles work at specific points in their world line, which is their entire history beginning to end. But there are plenty of things in space that we don't understand. Black holes being a big one. We think we know how black holes form and what they do, but what happens inside one is still a mystery. We can't send a person into a black hole to have a look. We can't send a probe into a black hole because its communications wouldn't be able to escape. And we haven't yet been able to study them enough from afar. The big issue with black holes is the singularity at their heart. A singularity is a point of infinite mass and density, warping space-time so much that nothing can escape its pull, including light. Scientists don't really understand how this happens, though, and currently guess that somehow the laws of physics themselves break down inside a black hole. They also don't understand what happens to the matter that the black hole pulls in. Since energy can neither be created nor destroyed, it doesn't make sense that the center of a black hole is destroying anything. It's a problem otherwise known as the black hole information paradox. So, do black holes break space-time? If it is able to be broken, a black hole is certainly the most promising candidate to do so. And that's why various scientists are working to try and actually create miniature black holes to get a better sense of what they're capable of. Whether that's a good idea or not is up for debate. There's yet another, even more destructive way black holes could rupture reality, though, if two of them collide. And a black hole collision isn't as far away as you might think. In about 100,000 years, the two black holes in the center of the Quasar PKS-1302, 102, 3.5 billion light years away from us, will collide. Scientific evidence points to the existence of a supermassive black hole binary in this system and that the two enormous black holes might only be about 0.1 parsecs apart or two trillion miles. This might seem like a big distance, but it's actually less than the size of our solar system, which, while still vast to us, isn't much when we're talking about two supermassive black holes on the brink of crashing into each other. The gravitational waves this collision will produce, which is about 3.3, Billion years in the making will be one of the most amazing things scientists have ever been able to study. Provided we haven't already destroyed ourselves with our analog black hole generators by that point, it'll be a cosmic spectacle to trounce all others. Wormholes are another great prospect for rupturing space-time, if we could prove they exist. Current physics does allow for and predict the existence of wormholes, but we've yet to observe one. A wormhole is an alternate route that leads from point A to point B in space. 
often shown as intergalactic shortcuts in sci-fi and they work by bending space-time around and making tunnels from one side to the other. Some theories about wormholes say that black holes might actually be wormholes and the output of a black hole is a white hole, an enormous glowing celestial construct that's incredibly repulsive, the exact opposite of a black hole. Other theories propose that wormholes just pop in and out of existence all over the place very quickly, much too quickly for us to even work out what we were looking at, let alone try and traverse it. Most wormholes probably aren't traversable because they'd likely be highly radioactive and very unstable, but do they break space-time? If they exist, they probably just bend it in ways we don't quite understand, and the fact that they might appear and disappear could mean that whatever tear they make or damage they create, they also fix when they go. If even wormholes aren't enough to punch a hole in the fabric of space-time, despite literally being holes in space-time, then maybe we need to examine things on a smaller scale. Once hypothetical time crystals have recently been created for the first time, if time was already weird, time crystals are even weirder literally breaking the laws of time by repeating their structures infinitely without consuming any energy. Natural crystals already repeat over and over where space is concerned, endlessly forming lattices and growing in strange geometrical shapes. Time crystals, though, are our first tangible example of what's called non-equilibrium matter, repeating themselves irrespective of space. They were thought to be impossible for years, but not anymore. Time crystals still aren't quite what we see in science fiction, though, when we think of breaking the space-time continuum. Nor are black holes and even wormholes. It's generally an idea associated with the dangers of time travel and taking those dangers too far. Time dilation means that we can travel forwards in time, but it's when we try to go backwards that things become really tricky. Since most scientists generally think time travel backwards is impossible, and all would agree that devices like the TARDIS and the DeLorean are fully in the realm of fantasy. Actually creating a backwards time traveler could truly constitute breaking space-time. It, along with a usable method for faster-than-light travel, would be a surefire way to break apart the laws of physics and totally screw up reality. And really, these are exactly the methods we see employed over and over again in science fiction because breaking the space-time continuum is really a sci-fi concept, first and foremost, but true space-time is probably much more resilient than the movies give it credit for, given that black holes and time crystals do and can exist and wormholes could theoretically exist. Even the idea of going back in time and rewriting history needn't have many or any implications for the fundamentals of the universe. Not if we accept the proposal of parallel universes and the multiverse, but that's a whole new problem. As far as we know, space-time is extremely flexible and extremely durable. It's bent, warped and challenged by all kinds of cosmic phenomena every day, but it has managed to last for the best part of 14 billion years. Reality hasn't imploded on us yet, but that's what would happen if the space-time continuum was broken. Let's take a closer look at how science fiction has played with the concept of the space-time continuum. Science fiction movies love time travel, but there's little hope of it soon becoming science fact. We take a look at why it continues to fascinate us. Science fiction offers humankind worlds in which everything is theoretically possible. Worlds where we can peer into the future and also adapt our past to make it suit our desires. We are fascinated by time travel because it allows us to set ourselves free of the limits of space and time, says Marc Attala, a senior lecturer in French literature at the University of Lausanne and director of Maison de Hélure, a science fiction museum in yverdon les bains In fact, all we need to travel in time is to look at the starry sky where we can gaze millions of years into the past, as far back as light itself needs to travel from distant galaxies to us on Earth. But the effects described by Einstein's theory of relativity mean time travel doesn't have to remain a passive experience on our part. When we move at high speed or are exposed to strong gravitational forces, time passes more slowly relative to everything else. 
In normal space travel, astronauts only experience such deviations in the range of several millionths of a second over the course of a year. In the blockbuster movie Interstellar, by contrast, hours turn into years as a spaceship approaches a black hole on its mission to save humanity. Time stretches out even further in the film The Planet of the Apes, where astronauts land on an unknown planet that eventually turns out to be their home planet Earth, but far in the future after it has been devastated by nuclear war. This elasticity of time is one of four categories of time travel described by the physics YouTuber Henry Reich. On his Minute Physics channel, he also discusses the motif of the time loop as celebrated in the comedy Groundhog Day, where a cynical weatherman has to live out the same day over and over again until he reforms his character to such an extent that a work colleague falls in love with him. Reich also pays special attention to his own favorite example of time travel, the scene in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, where Harry and Hermione travel back three hours in time but have to observe their earlier selves proceed through events exactly as before. They cannot change the past, which means that no time paradox arises. As Reich explains, logical consistency is a primary thing that I think lays the foundation for good time travel stories, not because logical consistency is important in and of itself, but because most of the time, in order to care about the characters in a story, we have to believe that actions have consequences. There are no reasons for us to believe that time travel will ever be possible, but nor is there any reason to rule out the possibility of it, as Mark Atala points out. The most popular form of time travel, however, is as anything goes. As a rule, time machines are the means of achieving it, like the car with the flux capacitor in the film Back to the Future, which accidentally sends the teenager Marty McFly back from 1985 to 1955. He promptly messes up his parents' first date, which confronts him with two problems. He has to find his way back to his own time, but first has to ensure his own existence by playing matchmaker to his parents. In the process, he even manages to make them both cooler than they were before. In theory, at least, this kind of time travel could be possible. If you play with the equations of relativity, you can create cross-connections in space-time. The four-dimensional continuum comprising the three dimensions of space plus the dimension of time. These so-called time loops could enable you to move forward into the past. Another possibility that has been a subject of much discussion is wormholes, a kind of tunnel that could connect two different places and different times in the universe. In the cult BBC series Doctor Who, one end of a wormhole is located in Cardiff in Wales. Wormholes are theoretically possible in physics, but no one has ever observed one. The warp drive used in the Star Trek universe provides for faster than light speeds, and thus also in principle involves the reversal of time. In order for such a distortion of space-time to be possible, we would somewhere have to discover exotic matter that possesses negative mass. There are no reasons for us to believe that time travel will ever be possible says Stefan Wolf, the head of the Cryptography and Quantum Information Group at the Università della Svizzera Italiana in Lugano and co-author of an article on the topic of time travel. But nor is there any reason to rule out the possibility of it. However, no research is being undertaken anywhere into the time travel of particles, he says. The theoretical investigation of the possibility of time travel opens up a field in which we might study mathematical phenomena and where we might perhaps find reasons for rejecting the possibility of time travel. Makatala believes that it's precisely because we intuitively know our physical boundaries that we are so interested in tales about this phenomenon. Time travel enables us to tell interesting stories, he says. It means we can rethink the past, just like in the sci-fi film Das Jesus Video in which the Catholic Church is afraid of the consequences of a video of Jesus made by time travelers. And when we postulate a hypothetical, far-off future, it offers us the necessary critical distance for us to take a hard look at our present times. That happens in the movie The Time Machine, in which its hero travels from Victorian London to a future when humankind is split into two different species, one that lives below ground and has turned to cannibalism, 
and one that lives a comfortable life on the Earth's surface but has abandoned all intellect. And there are also interesting examples of time-traveling paradoxes, as in 12 Monkeys, at the close of which the main character is shown as a child, witnessing his own murder as an adult. The moral here is even time travel can't help you evade your fate. As we can see, science fiction continues to push the boundaries of our imagination, allowing us to explore the infinite possibilities of time travel. While it remains a tantalizing concept, it's also a reminder of the incredible mysteries that still lie beyond our reach.